Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video today we're going to be talking about anaphylactic shock. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and check out ninjanerd.org where we have all of our lecture notes and illustrations for you guys to help you study for your test exams, whatever it is you're looking for, or just trying to make that mind better. So let's get into it. When we talk about anaphylactic shock, we're talking about an IgE mediated hypersensitivity. And what does that mean? It means that initially, maybe our first exposure to some type of allergen, we do not have that reaction. We don't have that hypersensitivity. But that second time around, that's when we have that hypersensitivity. And these are the people that you're thinking already, EpiPen, they need EpiPen, right? But let's go and talk about quick, what are some of the allergens that these patients typically have? So typically it's our peanuts, right? If you uh, were a kid and had a Reese's for the first time and then all of a sudden you're maybe in middle school and someone gives you a Reese's for the second time or a granola bar that's got peanuts in it and you're like, uh-oh, this isn't good. The other one could be medications. And you want to think about this in the NCLEX um, questioning and in the setting, the clinical setting, that if a patient all of a sudden is getting a new type of antibiotic that maybe they had or they had a type before that's in the same category and all of a sudden they're having these signs of anaphylaxis or an allergic reaction, this could be an IV. So you want to think about stopping that medication, right? Other ones that there typically are our bee stings, right? And our shellfish. Now there's many others. Anyone could be allergic to anything. But you want to keep in mind that these are some of the, the more commonly referred ones, right? And we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of what's going on with these patients. Why does this patient all of a sudden have not an allergic reaction the first time, but all of a sudden the second time they start having this really big allergic reaction? So in this pathophysiology, we're going to do our allergen here, right? And our allergen is our little bee, right? So we have this bee sting, and what happens? We have this patient right here who gets a bee sting, right? First time they get a bee sting, and okay, so this allergen is now in our body, right? And it's gonna go to this macrophage. And on this macrophage, we have our MHMHC2 complex, right? And with that, we get our little allergen, okay? And it sends a signal over to our T helper. And our T helper starts to release, right? And as it starts to release all these cytokines, right, that are gonna help us stimulate, these cytokines here help stimulate our B cell. And our B cell starts talking to our plasma cell. And it starts to release our antibodies. Right. And these antibodies are really important because we have this allergen now, we have this antibody that's gonna work against this allergen. And they go and bind with our mast cell. And that's really where our issue is with anaphylaxis, is the mast cell. So now our mast cell says, okay, I don't like that thing. I have all these antibodies. I am going to now make myself a nice defense mechanism here, right, with this antibody. And what is this antibody, remember? IgE. And now we're going to make a lot more of these mast cells, right? So now we are ready, we are primed and ready. So that now, when we have this mast cell, we have this response that whenever we have this allergen again, now we are ready to fight. So now this allergen again occurs, right? And we have our hypersensitivity occur. And this is where now we're gonna see all of the response in our patient. This is when the patient's gonna come into the ER, they're gonna come in or call 911 hopefully, and they're gonna say, I don't know, this isn't right, something's not right. And we're gonna talk about what all of those symptoms are right now. All right, engineers, so now let's talk about what happens with that anaphylactic shock or that secondary exposure, right? So now, once we have all those mast cells, what happens is we get that secondary allergen and we have a histamine response, right? And histamine normally is good, but what happens in this hypersensitivity is a lot more than what our body is ready for. So when we have a lot of histamine, it creates some vasodilation, right? So vasodilation. 
So because of that vasal dilation, right, we now have leaky vessels. What does that mean? Because our vasal dilation is occurring, we are having some, some third spacing of fluid. Now when you hear the word third spacing, you immediately can think edema, right, which is not good. So if we have edema, we can also have leaky, right? We're leaking out fluid, we're gonna have a decreased volume. So we're gonna have a decrease in our blood volume, right? And if you're thinking of anything within the body, if we have a decrease in the blood volume, that means we're gonna have a decrease in what? Well, we have vasodilation, right? We have this opening, a dilation and opening of the vessels. So we're already gonna have more space. So then because of that, we're gonna have less fluid. The leakiness is gonna create less volume. So we're gonna have low blood pressure. And when you start thinking of low blood pressure, ding, 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 you should be thinking of decreased perfusion. Right? So not good. First thing here, not good. We don't want a decrease in perfusion, why? Our patient then has organs that are not going to be perfusing properly and over time could be ischemic and then have long-term effects of them not working correctly, right? We also wanna think about this edema, right? As these leaky vessels start to leak out fluid, this edema can accumulate. And where can it accumulate? Places that we don't want them to, like in the larynx here, right? Around the lips. So we call this what? Angioedema. And we don't want that. We don't want that to occur because we're gonna have some issues now with what? Breathing. We already have problems with perfusion because our blood pressure is low. Now we're not gonna be able to get the right amount of fluid or oxygen in, so now we're not gonna be able to push that to those organs as well. Further on this, the histamine also can cause what? It causes our smooth muscle to constrict. And where do we have some smooth muscle? You're looking at it right here in these bronchioles. So now, not only do we have possible swelling in this area, now we have all of this starting to constrict, right? And because of that, we're going to again have a decrease O2, or ability to basically breathe, right? So because of this, we want to start thinking about airway, right? And that's what we usually think about with anaphylactic. We think about that closing, that clamping down of the, breathe, the ability to breathe, the ability to keep our airway safe. So let's go ahead and talk about why, what we do in this emergency. What are we going to do for our patient and how are we going to act when this occurs within our patient that we see? Okay, Ninja Nerds, so now we have a patient that unfortunately may be experiencing anaphylactic shock. So what's the procedure? What are we gonna be doing for this emergency? Well, remember we go back to our basics. What does our A ABC stand for? Airway, breathing, and circulation. And we just talked about some of the things that are occurring with our patient. They're gonna have that laryngeal edema. They're gonna have angioedema possibly. They're gonna have that constriction of the bronchioles and all the smooth muscle. They're gonna have that edema and then they're gonna have that decreased perfusion, possibly from all those leaky vessels. So, very important for us to start assessing right away. So if you walk into a patient's room, because typically the scenario that you're gonna get is you walk into a patient's room or you just left because you started antibiotics and they ring and you go back into the room and you're like, uh-oh, what's going on? And you're gonna look at the patient and you're gonna think, okay, I think they're having an anaphylactic reaction to this medication. So we're gonna quick do our airway breathing circulation, right? We're gonna alert somebody and we're gonna make sure that we remove or stop the medication or stop the allergen, right? So if they are having a reaction to a medication, we are going to stop that pump from infusing, right? So airway breathing circulation. It's a, it's a rapid, it's an alert. You wanna make sure you're telling your charge nurse, you're calling people at the bedside. We want to secure that we stop this allergen, we stop the infusion, and we also are putting them possibly on a non-rebreather. So we're giving them some oxygen, right? Because we wanna think about that perfusion, that circulation. Right after that, we wanna make sure that we are giving some of our rescue medications, right? Some things that we are be giving our patient in order to help them out. So one of them first is what? 
we want to be giving our patient epi, right? Epinephrine. And we're going to be giving it to them IM. Please remember this. This is very important. We're giving them IM. We're not giving an IV because if you're giving an IV, that's not good. This is, that's for a code. That's a totally different purpose. When you give it IM, it's going to help this patient out with this allergic reaction. While we're doing that, we also are going to give them some normal saline, right? Or any type of other um, fluids that the doctor may order in order to help them with that perfusion, right? Their volume is low. They have those leaky vessels possibly. We want to make sure they aren't going hypotensive. Along with this, we also want to be giving them an antihistamine. And what is one of those? The good old favorite Benadryl, right? We give them Benadryl through their IV to help them out as well. While we're giving them all these medications, hopefully there's other people there with your rapid helping you out. You're going to be able to check their vital signs. And if they are hypotensive, we're already helping them out by giving them some fluid, but we also want to Trendelenburg them, right? Put those feet up in the air, put that head back, because we want to make sure that all of our perfusion is going to our vital organs. What are our most vital organs? Our brain and our heart. So we want to make sure we're putting all that fluid there for them so we can hopefully perfuse and keep them hopefully conscious, one, and two, keeping them from going too hypotensive where we have any other issues with this patient. So remember, when we have a patient who is possibly experiencing that anaphylactic shock, you want to alert, you want to stop that allergen, and then we want to make sure we're giving them epi, IM, normal saline, and Benadryl. So I hope this made sense. I hope explaining the pathophysiology to you a little bit helped you understand of what's going on when we have an anaphylactic shock. And I hope you guys learned something from this. As always, until next time.